Hey friends, in this video we're going to take a look at six different methods for creating riser sounds. Riser sounds are like those things that lead into the next downbeat. You could also think of them as transition sounds. And any of these sounds I'm about to show you, you could just reverse them and all of a sudden they are now impact sounds or down sounds. There's a lot of different names for these things. Anyway, if you like this kind of thing, like, comment, subscribe. Let's get into it. Okay, so in this first example, take a listen to this. This is just using Ableton Simpler. <laughs> cool, so this method of making a riser sound is just using one sample. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this from scratch. I'm gonna make a new MIDI track, and you can use any sample. I'm gonna use one of these knocks from our forest collection. And if you ever wanna just make a simpler real quick, just take a sample and drag it into a MIDI track. Boom, you get a simpler. Look at that. All right, the way that we do this is we are looping playing the sample. So I'm turning on loop. Now it's just gonna loop forever, right? So there's a lot of extra stuff here. I don't need any of that. I just kind of need maybe like this much. So I'm gonna bring this, this is the end of the sample playhead, right? And this is the beginning of the sample, right? So I'm just gonna bring it maybe to like right here. And as you can see, you get a much faster loop. The other cool thing you can do is you can turn the length down. And this is the, this is how we make this effect. So as I turn the length down, it sounds like this. But notice how it's snapping to different places. That's because snap is on. What snap does is it basically finds zero crossings in the waveform and snaps to them. But if we turn this off, we can get a smooth transition. As you can see, it's just smoothly going through that sample and making that loop shorter and shorter. So we get this effect. <laughs> right. And so what we can also do is you can see that the transient of this sample is kind of high right here. What I can do is I can kind of just get away from all that nonsense and just kind of get into this area so we can get a smoother sound. Right? So, the next thing we'll do is we'll make a big MIDI clip. So I'm gonna select this area, hit Shift Command M, which makes a MIDI clip. Then I'm gonna take a, just make a note, doesn't matter which one. This is kind of an atonal sample. And as you decrease a loop length, what do you do? You actually go up in pitch. So that gives you, going up in pitch is one of the main features of many riser sounds, right? So now what we're gonna do is, is, as you can see, knock 14 sample length, right? It's right there. So the length of this loop is ready to go. So I'm gonna take this, make a little break point at 100%, and then take another break point and make it down at zero. And let's take a listen. Cool. But as you can hear, there's a lot more action at the end than there is at the beginning. And that's because of the exponential nature of doing something like this. So what we can do is we can bend this curve to make it make more sense. And the way that we do that is we hover the mouse till this line turns blue. Oh, see how it turns blue? We wanna get right up under it. And then you can hold option, and then you can click and you can pull it down and you can skew it. See how you can skew this? So now we get a much better. <laughs> much better sound, right? Now, at this point, this is kind of cool, but this is a very basic sound. So how do we how do we get some action out of this? Well, we want to get some movement going. Well, maybe we'll go over to controls and Simpler has an LFO. So what I can do is I can say, all right, let's add some filter action to this. So I'll turn the filter down just a little bit and I'll add the LFO to the filter. So here's the LFO section and you can see filter is set at zero right now. If I turn this up and I play this, we can kind of hear some action. If you turn up the resonance, you can hear it a little bit better. Maybe we'll turn it down. Okay, that's something. We're getting somewhere. But the next thing I wanna do is I want the LFO to spin up faster. Another feature of a lot of risers is what you're trying to do is you're trying to uh, build up energy, right? Energy is building up. You're trying to get anticipation, anticipation for what's happening next. So essentially, if I take the LFO and I make it really low or slow, okay, and then I increase its speed over time, this will build up that anticipation. So let's take a listen to this. Right? <laughs> so we're getting closer to our sound. Maybe what I'll do is I'll also hold option under this curve and kind of bend it up a bit. And I don't need to start that low, maybe something like this. And maybe I'll try to turn the frequency up just a little bit. Take a listen. 
Now, yeah, now the cool thing about the LFO on Simpler is that it's got a lot of range. You can go all the way up to this crazy, almost audio rate, 30 hertz, super fast, right? So let's take a listen to this. I'm going to increase this a little bit more. <laughs> now, we might as well have a little bit of fun now that we have this LFO set up. We could also pan this a little bit. So I'll turn the panning up to 20%, and now it's going to swirl around your head. Right? Awesome. So that's our first example using Simpler just to make a simple riser, right? Let's take a look at maybe a more complex example. So here's an operator, and I don't need to make a MIDI track if I just hold a key. <laughs> you can hear that the operator just within itself is doing the trick here, all right? So there's so many different ways we could do this. Let's just go ahead and go over the, the overarching concept here. And I'm just going to grab a operator, and we're going to go from scratch. So, from scratch we just get a sine waveform, and what we can do is we can use this second oscillator to affect the first one, right? So maybe the move here is to take the envelope of the second oscillator and make it slow, right? And we'll turn the volume all the way up so that this has an effect over time. we can hear the harmonic content growing over time. And if we turn the, the pitch up a little bit, we'll course it up maybe to like nine or something. We can hear that extra harmonic coming in there. So maybe let's turn the volume down now that we've got a brighter signal. Now in the last example, we were talking about one of the features of risers being increasing pitch. So what we can do is we can go to the pitch envelope over here. And when you turn it on, you're presented with this envelope here. So what I could do is I could bring the envelope down and you can go all the way down to negative 48. And so now if I turn the pitch envelope effect up, see, okay, so you can make the envelope, but you have to apply the envelope to the synth in order for it to do something. So now we have, right? And so what I can do is I can say, okay, so this is an envelope. It's only taking 500 milliseconds for it to get all the way up to its target pitch. So what I need to do is increase this decay time. <laughs> now it's going to take 40 seconds to get all the way up to the target pitch, right? And as you can see, it's got somewhat of an exponential curve. That's what this little dot does, so I can pull it down and make it more linear if I want. Right? Might be a bit slow. Maybe what we'll do is we'll say, all right, maybe something more like... Yeah, 15 seconds. Boom. All right, so let's talk about something else. We need some action in this. At this point, this is kind of boring. There's not really much going on. So we can use the LFO to do all kinds of wacky stuff. Maybe we'll take a third oscillator here and we'll say, all right, we're just going to have the LFO destination going to the third oscillator. And so in order to do that, I'm, as you can see, I'm turning off these other oscillators. I'm turning on the LFO. And so you can see only C is highlighted, right? And so in order for C to have an effect, I, first of all, I should probably turn the sustain all the way up. And then if I turn it up, take a listen. Right? We can hear that. We can hear that extra sound there, right? So what we can do with this is at this moment, what this means, destination A, this is all about pitch, okay? So I could do that. Sure, I could, I could move the pitch of this around. And let's just see what happens. And of course, that sounds pretty cool. How would I... How would I apply this though? How would I turn the amount up? Well, the way that you can do that is that there's an envelope, as you can see, associated with the LFO. So I'll just make the attack really long. Yet again, 15 seconds, right? And we can hear that, that rate increasing over time, right? That rate is increasing slowly. We could start it lower. And you can hear that, that it's spinning up faster and faster. If the amount is all the way up, take a listen. <laughs> right? Good times. And so, of course, we could also take this LFO and point it to something else. Maybe we'll say, all right, also the volume of C. Okay? So, destination B, 100%. So, the LFO is going to have 100% control over the volume of this second oscillator, right? So maybe uh, some final touches here is we could turn up spread and get a little bit more stereo out of this. Right? 
right? And another thing we could do is take a look at time. So something that's rad about time is that, let's say you have a song that has you know a certain speed, right? And you want this riser sound to be a specific speed. Let's say you want it to be faster. What I could do is I could turn time down and this will make this a lot faster. And you can hear that the pitch is going up higher faster, right? If I turn it down all the way, we get super fast, right? Really quick to the, <laughs> to the next part, right? And then if I need it to be slower though, I can turn time up. And what this does, what time does, is it makes every single envelope and LFO in operator slower or faster, right? So as you increase time, okay, now it's gonna be a lot slower. Now, maybe this riser sound at this moment isn't as impressive as you've heard other risers. Well, that's because what we're doing is we're focusing on making the raw sounds, right? I could easily jump in here and grab myself a delay Let's grab an echo for the fun of it. You know, I'll turn the dry wet down a little bit, reverb up. Right, you could do all kinds of things like that and, you know, make the riser even more impressive. And that's just adding special effects to it. And of course you need to do mixing, maybe some saturation and so on. What I'm showing you right now are the raw approaches to making these, okay? So real quick, some of you might feel like I'm flying through these parameters very quickly. And yeah, my channel, Seed to Stage, is kind of dedicated to the intermediate to advanced user. But I also have Ableton online courses, one on sound design, one on mixing and mastering, and one on songwriting and composition. These courses are super thorough, optimized and organized to take your skills to the next level very quickly. So if you're interested in learning about those, I highly recommend that you check those courses out. The links are in the description and in the comments. All right, let's get back to it. So let's take a look at the next example, and this is a wavetable. And so as you can hear in this example, I'm not going up or down in pitch at all. In fact, I'm just using the modulators to make the modulation that they're applying to the sound more and more intense over time, right? Take a listen again. And by the end of the sound, the modulation is so intense that we've lost that initial pitch. The initial pitch is gone. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this from scratch. Grab a fresh wavetable here. And of course, first sound we get is just a sine waveform. So I'll just choose, let's just choose a random wavetable. Okay, so now that we've got a waveform here, let's take a look at the matrix. The matrix is how you apply modulation to things in wavetable. So if I click on, for example, the position, I can apply an LFO to it, right? So now we have a modulating position every single time I play a note. Now at this moment, this is kind of boring. We're just going up and down forever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the matrix to my advantage. I'm gonna go to envelope two, and this time I'm just gonna make a long envelope, okay? So what I can do is I'll just make it something like this. Now, the envelope isn't applied to anything yet, right? There's nothing really happening. But what I can do is I can go to my matrix and I can apply this envelope to my LFO rate, okay? So to add destinations or targets to my matrix, I need to click on anything, any, any modulatable parameter such as rate. I'll click on rate. And now if I go back to my matrix, we can see LFO1 rate is there. So guess what? I'll take envelope two and apply it to LFO1's rate. Check this out. And we can see as the envelope goes down, we're slowly but surely making the LFO slower, right? So of course, if we're making a riser sound, we gotta do this backwards. So the cool thing about the matrix is you can go backwards with it, right? So now we're negative 50. Now, as you can hear, the effect that the envelope has over the LFO is different because the envelope is putting out a unipolar signal and the LFO is bipolar, okay? So what we need to do is we need to increase the LFO's rate getting started to get the effect we're looking for. So now that the LFO is very fast, take a listen. <laughs> you can hear how fast that gets, right? Cool, so that's our first little effect there. Let's look at something else. There's also oscillator warp and fold um, on the modern setting here in the wavetable. So what warping sounds like is this. <laughs> 
That's kind of fun. So what we could do is we could take LFO1 and apply it to that as well. But fortunately, I have two LFOs. If I just use the same LFO for this warping, it might not sound as complex as it could sound if I use the second LFO. So I'll use the second LFO and maybe I'll make its rate a little bit slower, right? Now I'll go back to the matrix and I'll add it to this oscillator one warp. So LFO two to oscillator one warp. And you can see how fast that is, right? So what we can do is we can use envelope two also on LFO two, but it's going to spin at a different speed. All right, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll make this slow as well, but maybe we'll do it a little bit faster. Now check this out. <laughs> cool. So now let's take a different approach. At this moment, we've only used envelope two to mess with the rates of LFO one and LFO two. Instead, we could also use envelope two to mess with something else. Let's say the frequency. All right, so the filter frequency, and what we can do is we can say, all right, so filter one frequency, envelope two, and this time we'll make it negative so that it opens up over time. Watch this. Now you can see that we've created somewhat of a target position for this filter. That's kind of boring. We want this to be all the way up, right? And maybe what I'll do is I'll change this to a distorted sound. So I'll I'll drive this filter a bit and I'll turn the output level down. Maybe we'll get a nice uh, thicker sound here. <laughs> now, the last thing I want to say is that this is the same as operator. You have a time setting, okay? So if I want this to go faster, if I want this entire process to go faster, I can turn time down and check it out. Right? Or I can turn it up and make it go a lot slower. And final touch, maybe we'll turn on one of these crazy unison modes. We'll turn on shimmer mode, turn the amount up a little bit, and now we'll get a nice giant sound. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, so moving on, take a listen to this. In this example, all that I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of the fact that most digital processors, when they're making reverb, have a size control. And if you change the size control, you're actually changing the pitch. So right here, I've got this sampled. Take a listen. Right? Just a knock sound. And if I turn on my reverb, it sounds like this. <laughs> so we already have a wide sound. This already sounds, there's, there's complexity to this sound, right? So let's go ahead and make this from scratch. I'll cut this out, grab myself hybrid reverb, slap it on there. And with the dark hall mode, I'm gonna turn the blend all the way up so that we're just getting the algorithm side, right? And I'll turn the dry wet all the way up and this is what, we, what it sounds like, right? I'll turn the decay up a bit. And now check out what happens when I change size around. So let's go ahead and we'll take that size and we'll change it over time. So we'll start with a big size and we'll make it go to a smaller size, thus increasing the pitch. Right, so maybe we want to make that longer. And at this moment, that's kind of linear. So another thing we could do is make it a little bit more exponential. Or maybe we want to go the other way, which I think this would probably make sense going this way instead. Now, another thing we can do is we can turn the damping down, which is going to let more of the top end through. Take a listen. And we also have modulation. This will control a little bit of the pitch modulation inside of this, right? So take a listen to this now. You can also freeze the reverb. So another thing you could do is you could turn on freeze, right? After you fed the signal into here. So maybe what we'll do is we'll take a look at this freeze command and we'll say, all right, freeze, you're gonna happen right after the sample gets hit. And now the, the reverb won't lose any volume. Take a listen. Right? <laughs> and so, of course, you could record that or capture that. So that's just a really simple way of taking any sample and applying reverb to it and turning it into a riser sound. All right, so next example, we have a collision. Now, this is a really interesting process right here. Take a listen to this.
Now, this is taking advantage of some really interesting features inside of Collision, so let's go ahead and take a look at this from scratch. I'll go ahead and insert the new MIDI track, and I'll grab Collision. All right, so normally with Collision, you have a resonator, and you have something to excite the resonator, right? So this is a mallet sound. If I instead turn on noise, what this does is it has a noise envelope. Okay, so at this moment, you can just barely hear that. I have to turn up the noise envelope a bit. Right? What we have here is we actually have a envelope. So one thing I could do is I could turn sustain all the way up, which means that if I hold my key down, we'll resonate that thing forever. <laughs> right? So that's pretty loud. Maybe I'll turn it down to something like this. Now, something else I want to talk about is that there's also a pitch envelope associated with our resonator. So if I turn the pitch envelope all the way down and turn the time all the way up, we're going to get a slow but sure increase in pitch. So as you can hear, there's a lot of potentials here. So now what we can do is we can try different materials and see what they yield. Let's try the string. And another thing you can do is you can put this on a high quality mode and you'll get more harmonics in there. You could hold a chord, for example. You could turn up the brightness to get even more top end. That's <laughs> such an interesting sound, right? Let's use Membrane. This is one of my favorites. Take a listen. Now, something else we could do is we could start to add some movement to this. So, Collision has an LFO section, and this is kind of cool. So, we could choose maybe filter frequency or noise frequency, right? And we're going to be filtering this noise. So, what I could do is I could turn this over to maybe bandpass mode or something. And the amount, if I turn it up, take a listen to this. <laughs> That's kind of weird. <laughs> so I think that Collision has a lot of creative potential. And if you mess around with this thing, you try these different materials, you can get some pretty crazy sounds. I wish the LFO spun up a little bit faster than it does. But as you can hear, there are some new sounds that you could create with this for sure, right? Okay, and in the last example, I just want to talk about the fact that you can make a riser sound without having any parameters tweaked inside of effects or instruments. You can just use Ableton's built-in warping modes and the clever ways that it implements that to create a riser sound. So let's just take a look at how we might do that. So right here, I just have a splash sample, right? Just good old splash. So what I can do is I can reverse this sample because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to increase energy over time to build anticipation, right? That's the reason we do riser sounds, right? So if I play it from here, we can hear that that effect is happening, but it's happening way too fast. So one thing I could do is I could hit Command E and I'll just cut this part of the waveform out. Now, if you hover your mouse at the end of a clip and you hold Shift, you can then stretch the wave out and you can see that waveform stretching out, right? Now, at the present moment we're on beats mode, which means that it'll just play the transients back and forth and give us kind of a warbly effect to try to make up the space. Take a listen. Right, that's not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch this over to texture, which is one of the best warping modes, and this is just going to play very small granular bits of this wave to make up the space. Take a listen. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Almost has its own pitch, right? How's that being done? Well, if we go over to the clip automation, we can see that grain size is now an automatable parameter, right? So maybe we'll start a little bit lower with the grain size at like 100. We'll go back over here to the clip envelopes and we'll just say, all right, let's start this grain size very, very slow or low, and then we'll decrease the grain size over time. Take a listen. Whoa. Right, pretty crazy. Now, unfortunately, at this moment, I can only go so far, right? I can't stretch this again because it's gonna mess up my, my clip envelope. So the move here is just to freeze the track, right? Then I'll flatten the track. And now I've committed this track to 
audio, right? And so now I can I can further manipulate it. So maybe one thing I want to do is I want to stretch it out. So I'll, hold, I'll hover the mouse at the end, hold shift, pull it out, okay? And now I can go back over here and I can switch this back over to texture and maybe try a different grain size. Take a listen now. <laughs> right? So maybe this would benefit from some filtering, of course, and some other things. But as you can see, we could just keep going. We could keep cascading through these different settings. And so, of course, you could also mess with the course control for pitch. And maybe what we'll do is we'll say, all right, let's take a look at that. On the clip side, we're going to start way low in pitch and go up way high. You know, let's see what happens here. Turn this down a bit, probably. Right? Again, sounds like this could benefit from some filtering. Heck, why not? Grabbing an auto filter, just a little bit of filtering at the end. Boom, right? So you can also just use waveforms, right? You can also just use the warping modes inside of Ableton to create risers. Word. Awesome. So as you can see, I'm a fan of riser sounds. I really like making them. So if you have any ways that you make riser sounds, leave them down in the comments. I'd love to see what you do. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.